Namaste, Rajeshri Nandi sir. Namaste. Over the next few years, we are going to see the resurgence of Bhagwan Bhairav across this country. Why that message is coming to you? Bhagwan Bhairav is a more uh, fierce form of Lord Shiva. Even death is scared of him. When you chant, what is happening at the astral plane, and how does that affect the physical plane? Shiva, who says that Kali Yuga Tantra is the primary mode of worship that will happen, his words are never going to fail. With this kind of exponential growth of this particular Bhairav Nam Japa is not possible if. He himself did not want. Even my appearing in that podcast was also something which I had not planned. How do I cleanse my karma? The last time we did it, one day total of 51 lakhs japa of whom Bhairavi Nama happened. Why does this cult fall only in Kashi and not anywhere else? So you know, is there some mystical power there? Yes. Namaste, sir. And uh, welcome to the second, your second appearance on the LSM podcast. Uh, we are so privileged that we get to speak to you the second time. And this time, I want to focus on Bhagwan Bhairav, Lord Bhairav, or Bhairav Baba, as he's fondly called. Also, mm. um, you know, you've now been very, very famous for uh, saying that. Over the next few years, we are going to see the resurgence of uh, Bhagwan Bhairav across this country. So I want to talk a little bit about that. You know, the the why that message is coming to you, how the manifestation will come. But before that, uh, just a bit about the history of Lord Bhairav. You know, who is Lord Bhairav, and you know, where where do we see Lord Bhairav in the scriptures? Uh, and when I, before I start, thank you once again for inviting me. जय भैरव बाबा जय माँ कामाख्या जय माँ तारा स्टार्ट सो सो भगवान भैरव इज अ मोर फियर्स फॉर्म ऑफ लॉर्ड शिवा एंड वी फाइंड हिज रेफरेंस इज मैंशन इन द पुराणाज शिवा पुराण स्कंद पुराण एंड अदर टेक्स्ट एंड लॉट ऑफ इट इज ऑल्सो इन द तंत्र ही इज बेसिकली द शिवा पुराण से इज दैट वेन्स वंस when there was a conflict when brahma had uh, out of ignorance claimed that he is equal to shiva at that time so this story has some variations in some of the puranas but broadly this is the idea so he claimed that he had acquired the same level as lord shiva something so then out of shiva's anger was produced a very ferocious very fierce form of a deity and using the nail of his left hand ring finger he cut off the fifth head of brahma the head that had made this claim okay he cut off that head and this form was known as kala bhairava then shiva tells that kala bhairava is named so bhairava means somebody who both creates sustains bharana sustains and uh, maintains the universe sustains maintains destroys the universe not only that he is also called kala that means that he is beyond time he is something uh, even death is scared of him okay so he is that powerful a form uh, ferocious yes that powerful that ferocious but that intensely spiritual there's an intensity of bhairava which is rare in uh, which is not which which is a clear differentiation from normal conception of shiva and then the puranas also state that actually there is no difference between shiva and bhairava it is the maya of lord shiva that makes people think that bhairava is different from him so kal bhairav or shiva is it's like one deity taking on two different aspects okay it's one deity two different aspects another difference is that shiva is more transcendental whereas bhairava is more close to our physical plane because he is closer to the physical plane and the physical plane has the gunas of raja tama and all these things it requires that type of strength intensity to neutralize those gunas and bring out the divine here okay so this is how the conception of kala bhairava comes in and after that the puranic story says that after cutting off the head of brahma that kapala of brahma sticks to his hand that's kala of brahma and with that lord shiva says but <coughs> do you have done something divine uh, still killing the removing the head of brahma is brahma hatya brahma hatya is a ghor pap okay uh, because uh, brahma hatya 
at least originally it is the brahmins who were doing the upasana it is them who carried the knowledge they had the vidya they had the strength so anybody who assaults or kills a brahmin is committing a grave error grave papa and lot of uh, negative effects will come to that individual so he says that you have destroyed brahma brahma is like the the one who gives the vedas not to just anybody okay so for that there is a prayaschitta that has to be done prayaschitta means you have to roam around the earth in different places and there will be a grotesque looking feminine entity that also appeared which is the personification of brahma hatya and she will move along with you and you keep going till you reach a place jaha pe that skull of brahma separates from your hand and there you will settle down so like that bhairava kal bhairava goes around everywhere he goes to vaikuntha also and vishnu uh, this text say that vishnu looks at him and vishnu bows to him and tells him that this is a leela you are doing is a play you are doing you are enacting a play so gods don't do things in the way we do even their all their activities even this is a play they are doing they have that sense within them they are not attached to ki maine so even when they are destroying something they are not doing it out of anger the way we do it with anger and attachment no okay they are at all times dharmic every activity of them is rooted in dharma in their perception of dharma in their dharma okay. so vishnu then gives him portion of vishnu's own blood into the kapala okay and tells him that you go there go to kashi so he goes to kashi and in kashi that skull falls from his hand and the place where it falls is called kapal mochan okay and that curse of brahmahatta leaves him from there and then he stays in kashi and he becomes the kotwal the guardian of kashi okay kal bhairava becomes famous as the guardian of both the physical place called kashi as well as the spiritual state called kashi he is known as papa bhakshanam he eats the sins of people whatever papa you have done so so here is a deity whose formation the first thing he does is he is affected he is he is pursued by the curse of brahmahatta and he gets rid of that and he roams around for 12 years okay so he is has the ability to destroy the sins of people to the extent it is said when you in the right condition of mind if you have a darshana of kal bhairava of kashi bhagwan bhairava of kashi if you have a darshan it destroys lifetimes of sins that you have done just by his darshan he will remove all the sins that you have done and the sins means your karmic sins okay sins sounds like a loaded moral word i don't mean it in that sense i just mean the karmas that you are carrying in that sense and once the karmas are lightened you are capable of going higher tabhi to enlightenment aayega once your sins are or the karmas are finished and the most drastic of all karmas is brahmatya so he shows a way how to get out of brahmatya okay which is considered as a very very powerful thing then the skull that he holds is very significant it is the khappar of brahma brahma is the creator so basically he is hold it's like he is a deity who is holding the skull of the universe in his hand and he goes around begging with it okay just like that so he starts off by destroying the creation why do we not worship brahma by the way you have not seen us worshiping brahma do you very rarely in rajasthan pushkar because brahma represents the ordinary state of creation that we do which we do out we are all, at all times creating something you are creating your value in your life you are creating a company you are working something your office hai friends hai colleagues hai something like that this creation is happening by the activity of your ego so we are saying that whatever you have created out of your ego it creates that sense of distortion in reality in your perception of reality and it doesn't give you the actual picture of the higher truth so first thing that bhairava does is that it kills that ego fatak first thing and then it makes you stand in front of reality that is why he appears scary because that reality is digambara it is not clothed it's very naked reality the truth as it is okay <coughs> but in order that the world keeps functioning because everybody becomes self realized the world khatam ho jayega world has to function so he shows also out of his kindness how to get rid of the papa the grave sin that occurs when somebody does brahmahatya and he, by getting rid of the sin of brahmahatya committed by decapitating the head of brahma not just any brahmin this is the head of all jo ved deta hai unka so he has decapitated brahma's head and then he shows how to get out of that sin okay so he does it for lok kalyana so that generations and people can see in fact in imitation of bhairava there is to be 
సంప్రదాయస్ ఇన్ ఏన్షియంట్ ఇండియా కపాలిక ఇన్ అఘోర సంప్రదాయస్ టుడే ఇట్స్ మచ్ లెసర్ బట్ అట్లీస్ట్ దట్ టైమ్ తో ఇట్ ఈస్ టు బి వన్ పాయింట్ ఇట్ వాస్ వెరీ పవర్ఫుల్ పశుపత సంప్రదాయస్ అండ్ లాకులిష సంప్రదాయస్ దే యూస్ టు అట్ వన్ స్టేజ్ ఆఫ్టర్ దీక్ష దే ఈస్ టు ఆస్క్ అ మ్యాన్ టు ద సాధక్ టు గో అబౌట్ ట్వెల్వ్ ఇయర్స్ బెగింగ్ విత్ హ్యూమన్ స్కల్ ఇన్ యూర్ హ్యాండ్ అండ్ యూ విల్ నాట్ స్టే ఇన్ అ హౌస్ యూ విల్ నాట్ స్టే ఇన్ సెట్ సొసైటీ యూ కెన్ గో బెగింగ్ సన్సెట్ హో జాతా యూ గో అవుట్ సైడ్ ఆఫ్ ద టౌన్ ఆర్ స్టే సమ్వేర్ స్టే అలోన్ నో ఫ్రెండ్స్ నథింగ్ జస్ట్ the bhairav upasana and the khappar it's an imitation of bhairava and after 12 years you attain a communion of oneness with the deity hmm. okay so that was extreme practice they used to call it mahavrata this was in which period uh, i don't know i think at least 1000 to 1500 years to hoga and um, and also some scholars say that in the mahabharata also there are some references to pashupatas Just many scholars say that so it's possible it is very ancient okay and this was a prevalent practice and this is how bhairava is first coming into the picture he guards the realm of kashi kashi is of course a very beautiful amazing place of lord shiva which we already know of but kashi is also an internal state eventually eventually as certain experiences happen there is a uh, some some kind of a something related to light okay very luminous internal state comes in into the an individual for lack of better words uh, it creates a vast amount of knowledge a bliss of gyana and this thing this state and it is there's a lot of prakasha there's self effulgent light in that state light of not just normal light so the quality of light is what it reveals things in a dark room you put light you can see things so seeing means knowing so this is a light that has wisdom in it that teaches you things that shows you things and that has a very beautiful glow and joy in that there is a state when you reach that that light becomes natural that is kashi okay the lord of kashi kashi is vishveshwara the lord of the universe he has every knowledge in the world bhagwan mahadev in kashi has everything he can he, he, there is veda part also going on and there is aghora tantra sadhana also going on he has the ability to harmonize both but to enter that state you will first have to pass through the test of kalbhairav he guards who can enter and who who, is, who has the fitness to enter and who does not have the fitness to enter he creates the adhara your mind and body has to have the capacity otherwise nobody you can't just barge into that state nobody can enter that state until he allows you yeah so how does kalbhairav allow you to enter the state of ah, kashi so you that is how you do the sadhanas you cha- that is the whole point of sadhana you change your mind and body you uh, you remove the he removes the sins that you have committed okay and that is at the philosophical karmic level but at the physical level one of the things that he does is he creates strength in your adhara mind and body a strength that bhairava upasana gives is very very useful you have the capacity to go through just about anything that stamina he creates in an individual that is very useful very useful in life very useful in sadhana and until you do the sadhana you will not understand this ye book padh ke aur 10 cheez likh ke ye aise nahi hota hai those who actually have done if you do the sadhanas going inside it will create slowly a sense of detachment a sense of fearlessness relative sense of fearlessness not saying 100% fearless but relatively what you were to what you will become is a state of greater state of strength of fearlessness and that creates strength in your mind and body which is very important in order to enter those states because those states it may seem like when i say light those are also very intense so somebody who is very gross in his mind and body who does not have the strength in the mind and body cannot enter that state he'll he'll be psychologically destroyed that fabric of your mind body that strength is what bhairava's kripa comes he shows you there and not just in the puranic method then comes the tantras in the tantra sadhana so he is like the big boss he bhairava speaks to bhairavi and the wisdom comes across to us to the world in the form of tantras how to do the upasana of devatas what is the methodology of tantra sadhana what mantras to chant etc etc it is his domain he is the guru of the full path of tantras 
Okay, so everything that we spoken about in the first episode. Yes. All the derivation of all tantra sadhana comes from Bhairava. His mind. Some of the other form of Bhairava. Whether it is Dakshiramurti Bhairava, whether it is Ananda Bhairava. Ananda Bhairava is the Kolo Marg guru and like that. Even Batuka Bhairava. Okay. Yeah, that was I was just coming to that, you know, because you've said uh, you know the story that you've just taken us through is the story of Kal Bhairava. Mm. So, you know, you've sp- spoken about the nail and the mm. cutting off of the head and the uh, guardian of mm. Kashi and, you know, there's something there also very interesting to explore is that why does the skull fall only in Kashi? I want to come to that also mm. and not anywhere else. So, you know, is there some mystical power there yes. in Kashi? B- not only the mystical power actually in the actual physical space of Kashi, but also in the psychological state of Kashi. I told you that you cannot barge into that with a very gross karmic scale. So basically it means that to enter Kashi, your karmas have to be removed. You cannot enter that state of Kashi so long as you are carrying a whole baggage of karmas. So that is why the most drastic of karmas, which is Brahma Hatya, it leaves you the moment you try to enter into Kashi. But following the path of Bhairava, you cannot barge otherwise. So, so how do one, how do I cleanse my karmas? Well, there are there are many ways of doing it. All sadhanas are finally somehow or the other rearranging and cleansing the karmas. Okay. <coughs> but specifically coming to Bhairav Upasana, Bhairav Upasana is one of the, in my opinion, one of the very good methods that gives you the right framework, the right mindset and the right strength in your mind and body to go into higher sadhanas or very subtle states. He, it prepares you for Tantra Sadhana and it prepares you for entering into the state of Kashi. And that is one of the biggest blessings of Bhairava. So, he makes you fearless by going through the situations that you fear. So, it is not that the world is going to change because of you. You are not that special. Nobody is special. But he will give you that strength ki the, whatever you are thinking is fearful, you will even pass through that and you will still be able to control your fear. And not just fear. Fear is one thing. The other is when Bhairav Upasana gels with an individual, it protects the individual from many negative things. So, Bhairava is invoked as a protection power for from any kind of negative things. So, negative beings, negative entities, negative spaces, when Bhairava mantras are done, uh, they normally, they will flee. First, if there are very nasty kind of entities, negative, they will first try to become more active and stop you from doing it. Because they don't like Bhairava mantras. They they get, it causes affliction to them. Okay, uh, But if you pursue, it brings about dramatic changes in that space. He will not allow the negative entities to cause harm to the Ubasaka. So what I also wanted to ask you is that, you know, you spoke about the form of Kal Bhairav. Mm. And then there are also, you spoke about that there are, uh, you know, you've spoken before about the 64 forms of Bhairav. Mm. And then there are the eight main forms of Bhairav which you were referring to. So, uh, what are these eight forms and how are they different from the Kal Bhairav form? Uh, So, what's the relationship between those and is Kal Bhairav the complete Bhairav form there or is that a different form and then do the, you know, the other forms reside somewhere else? So, I have some of these doubts in my mind, I just wanted to understand. So, basically there are the Rudrayamal Tantra mentions there are 64 forms of Bhairava. So, each of these Bhairavas are also connected to different colors. There are 64 colors we know, arts. 64 areas where of activity, of, of perfection. So, in each of these, there is at least one Bhairava present. Along with that, there will be a Shakti also with the Bhairava. So, of these 64, 8 of the Bhairavas are considered most powerful, most important. These are the Ashta Bhairavas, 8. So, they are basically, it, they have links to directions from from east, then it comes to other directions and all that. So, first it starts with Ashitang, Asitanga Bhairava, Rudu Bhairava, Chanda Bhairava, Krodha Bhairava, Unmatta Bhairava, Kapala Bhairava, Pishana Bhairava, Samhara Bhairava. Each of these eight Bhairavas contain certain directions, certain domains, certain activities they are very good at. They can bless you with those activities. Like, uh, for example, Rudu Bhairava is, is like a guru form of Bhairava. If he blesses you, the Guru Tattva will activate an individual. Okay. Uh, Samhara Bhairava, as the name suggests, Samhara means destruction. So, he is invoked when there are very lot of negative things in a particular place. Uh, then say Chanda Bhairava. Chanda Bhairava, if you look at it, uh, if you look at his iconography, is almost like Kartikeya. It's almost like Skanda. He'll have a peacock, he'll have a bow and arrow. He's white in color. Okay. 
only when he's going into battle, he becomes very fierce. And he is very good in destroying enemies. Just like Kartikeya destroys so many Asuras, he destroys a lot of enemies. Okay. And he gives a certain, uh, um, certain power in your activity so that you succeed in whatever you are doing. Enemy did not always be an individual. It could be suppose I want to buy a ticket, railway ticket today and there are like 200 people standing in the line. Uh, so you are, you have a goal, whatever is obstructing you from that goal is your enemy. Okay, it need not be an individual, it could be a circumstance. So he gives you the energy to go through the circumstance and reach your goal. Chanda Bhairava. Similarly, Krodha Bhairava is there. Krodha Bhairava has similarities with, you will see that Vaishnavi Shakti. So, all, there are Ashtamatrikas are there. Their corresponding Bhairavas are these Bhairavas. So, they can, there are chakras in which these Ashta Bhairavas can be worshipped. In some cases, not very common, but some cases, people may have any one of these Ashta Bhairavas whom they specifically worship. Okay, which is also possible and, and certain unique capacities of that Bhairava will uh, start manifesting to that individual. Okay, uh, uh, one two cases I have seen. One of the uh, uh, one of the Bhairavas specifically was invoked in case of a, somebody who was having a lot of health issues, um, of particular type of health issues. So that uh, that Bhairava's blessing puja was done, and things got resolved eventually. So this eight Bhairavas they have a link to the direction. They have specific capacities, uh, and they have a specific puja paddhatis also and mantras also. So, worshipping them gives you blessings regarding related to that particular Bhairava. Yeah. So, and they are very important because these eight control, these are like the primary Bhairavas of the 64 Bhairavas. More powerful than these eight is Kala Bhairava and Baduka Bhairava. Hmm. Kala Bhairava is the original. So, sorry, Sami, I just ask you this, you know, when you are saying the eight Bhairavas are there, and then you are saying more powerful than these is the Kal Bhairava and the Batuk Bhairava. Are these, are Kal Bhairava and Batuk Bhairava part of the 64 so it is like this. Actually, there is only one Bhairava. Right. That is the the Adi Bhairava or the Kal Bhairava, whom we call it. Right. Out of himself, he projects various Bhairavas. Just like we were discussing, there is only one Shakti, there is Adi Shakti. She manifests various forms out of herself. Each of these forms are individual though. They have their mantra, they have their personality, etc. etc. Same way, Bhagavan Bhairava ek hi hai. He manifests out of himself this Ashta Bhairava. Each of these Ashta Bhairavas again manifest eight. Hmm. Like this, eventually there is a 64 Krama of Bhairava that comes in. Okay, So, and this concept is very interesting to understand. When we say we are manifesting, uh, they are complete, once a projection of another Bhairava form is created, he functions independently in the universe. So, the eight Bhairavas are completely independently functioning deities. Though at some point they are projections from Kala Bhairava. He has, which in other words, which means, as I was explaining, these eight Bhairavas have their domains in which they are very good. Like Rudu Bhairava gives, the Guru Tattva is very interesting and similarly, there are other Bhairavas, Samhara as the name says, he can destroy negative things, negative entities hmm. and all that. Kala Bhairava will contain all the Got powers it. of the 64 inside him. Got it. Got it. Okay. So, so you have, uh, I should also take the opportunity to tell the listeners that, you know, we are very grateful and we have been blessed that you have decided to create a, a series which is on the Om Bhairavaya Namaha Mantra. And uh, I should also tell the listeners that actually we have been blessed that Sir has himself, uh, you know, kind of chanted the mantra uh, and many of the ways to uh, kind of absorb and imbibe the mantra. So, when we are, firstly, we are very grateful for that uh, and, you know, that we have that on the Level Supermind app. Um, for a devotee of uh, Bhagwan Bhairav, what are the, you know, what, what, why should I undertake this uh, start of this Bhairav Upasana in this, in this form? Right. So, that's a good question. Uh, <coughs> I feel that uh, looking, uh, objectively analyzing certain set of events and circumstances that have happened. So, I have been worshipping Bhagavan Bhairava for quite some time. Anyway, that's part of my uh, natural progression in sadhana. The first mantra that I ever received in Upadesha, Upadesha on from my first guru was a Bhairava mantra. Okay, And at the time when I didn't even know what is Bhairava, I've never 
even heard of Bhairava at that time, many years ago. Uh, but I feel that there are certain circumstances that have appeared and certain uh, signs and certain, not just signs, mm, the way certain things have developed organically without the slightest amount of effort, it is not possible without the actual will of Bhagavan Bhairav to happen this way. So basically, say about uh, one, two years ago, for example, one, two years ago, there's a group of people whom I actually guide in sadhana. Okay. So those people, we, all of us, whomever I guide, some or the other will do some Bhairav sadhana. Along with that, some other deity sadhana also. But Bhairav sadhana is uh, standard. Little bit of Bhairav sadhana has to be done. Uh, so, uh, and collectively on Ashtami Tithis, we do, uh, collectively, we do some japa of Bhairava, simple japa. Hmm. Then, we used to initially say one, one and one year ago, we used to end up doing not more than maybe, not even a thousand, few thousand maybe, not even that japa is to happen, Ashtami Tithis. And it's very simple to do because Ashtami is a Tithi that Bhairava loves. It's his Tithi, Krishna Baksha Ashtami. So basically, we used to keep, keep a photo and do japa, put some bhog, prasad, and then later on, you take and put it outside on the street or somewhere so that some animal can consume it, be it a dog or a cow or whatever, okay, just outside. In one year, uh, slowly that idea, inspiration came that uh, open this up to anybody else who is willing to do this. So initially, we used to have a very close group of few of my, you know, I don't like the term disciple because I'm not, I don't consider myself as a guru, but let's say students. Okay, who my mentor and guide. So, we used to do that. Then we opened it up. In one year, from a few thousand, it went to 51 lakhs the last time we did it. One day, total of 51 lakhs japa of whom Bhairavaya Nama happened. Last Ashtami Dithi. People organically connected. Nobody asked them, Ki aao bhai karo. Hmm. Nobody told them. People not only did, not only did once, there are people who have been doing for months now. Okay. I mean, if it was not to stick with you, it will not stick beyond 10 days, 15 days. There are people who have been doing for months. And there's the amount of uh, emails that I receive. Uh, you know, uh, it's a good 70-80% of them see some positive developments happening. See, the attitudes changing. The most greatest positive development that can happen is your attitude towards reality and life change. There's an inner strength that comes in. Okay. So, all these things. So, I feel... And I'm I'm pretty certain about it. This kind of exponential growth of this particular Bhairav Nam Japa is not possible if he himself did not want it. And not to mention that even my appearing in that podcast was also something which I had not planned. And it happened in a very peculiar and interesting fashion. And to me, I'm pretty certain that um, I know it for a fact that where this inspiration coming from and what is the, if you have been worshipping a deity for long, you'll know. Actually worshipping instead of just, there are a lot of people who claim to worship, but actually um, I've seen that many times, uh, you know, people who claim various things, but once they start speaking or writing about it, within five lines you understand ki how much is copy paste from here and there. Or kisne actually kiya hai or kisne idhar udhar se, you know, idhar jod ke udhar jod ke kuch bana diya and projection of that. But I'm saying if you actually worship, you'll understand science of the deity. Because you are trying to reach the deity. So you have already been experiencing the science. So you know that. So this whole thing was entirely, I, I attribute this entirely to uh, Bhagavan Bhairav's blessing, Anugraha, Kripa, we call it. He wanted it happened, it happened. To me, it really does not matter. Tomorrow, this 51 lakhs, this Japa, Abhito, I also don't coordinate this thing. My students, they have a open telegram forum and they coordinate and all that and they just tell me, and people send in photos also. photo when they're doing this japa, how does it look, the altar, how does the altar look and things like that. And that's what I thought that 51 lakhs is not possible organically uh, without money. Uh, I had no idea. I will not tell you that I had right at the beginning I had an idea that this escalation, it's, this will exponentially grow to this. So I feel <coughs> that there is definitely a, a, a strong presence of Bhairava uh, and it's like he, he wants that this thing be done. He wants that more people connect and that simple mantra itself will give results. There are many other mantras of Bhairava, complicated. But Om Bhairava Nama is more like a Nama mantra. Nama mantra anybody can do. It requires no, no complicated things. And with faith, with devotion, if you do, there is a... Um, and I'm just talking cold facts because people keep sending letters to me. So 70% of them, more or less, see in few months a very 
powerful transformative effect and uh, positive developments also though that is not the primary aim of this sadhana so positive developments happen wo achhi baat hai but the aim is it's a spiritual upasana to make you more spiritually oriented and help you in the path okay so like that now uh, that is why i feel that not just why but actually more and more people will join in to this japa of the mantra om bhairavai namah and not only will they join it will help them to connect to receive blessings of bhagwan bhairava and uh, in that context the recording that we did of the bhairava japa i hope and i feel that it will be very fruitful to lot of people and this is going to go higher and higher from there ye jo this last ashtami thi 51 lakhs um, then i started thinking seriously that <coughs> you know ye ye to maine nahi karwaya let me be very clear and i'm not saying out of false humility na kisi ko ja ke main bola ki bhai tum baith ke karo ye kan up organically people started doing it okay then i thought that very good if people are doing it that means baba will sit hmm. this should eventually go into crores of japa crores of japa it should cre- it will create that tatva in the environment in the in the in the astral environment of this country and that will have a very strong impact in uh, which will be visible in the coming years not only that when you do nama japa of a deity to this level eventually and uh, and um, um, souls who have very strong connection to the devata maybe very ancient masters they will again come back they will again again get born because the atmosphere becomes like that and any one of those masters or something great great souls if they come they had like they are like those uh, engines of the good strain ek jana aata hai to they'll just pull the whole consciousness everywhere they have that power hmm. so this is the beauty of how these things play out one step at a time one step at a time if your mind is a little open you'll understand if you just remove your ego and see clearly you'll see where the reality is going it's absolutely clear and i that's what i was telling um, even ranveer also it is not being done by anybody it is he who is getting it done yeah. he who is getting it done all the thing that i remember was first when i appeared in the podcast before that i was unsure aana hai nahi aana hai kuch nahi i was doing a sadhana and i was very clear guidance came that uh, check the date they tell you to come and that date is important for me for me means bhaira baba and you just go and i was called i was given a date and i first thing i said i didn't even check my calendar i said that wait i want to check the panchang and i opened the panchang and i saw that it's bhairav jayanti and i just said okay i'm coming mm. nothing else i knew wow no idea wow. so uh, that's what if you had asked me at that time ki ek saal baad 51 lakh japa of this is going to happen it's impossible what are you talking about so that is what the reality is and if it is 51 lakhs today give it 2 years it will go up to crores yeah. and this in that context this can be very beneficial to people very beneficial to people no complicated processes are needed you don't have to do like ekdam bahut sa difficult kuch sadhana of course there are higher grades of sadhana but when the devata is very active let's to put it this way in this in our plane then even the simplest mantra will start showing effects you are connecting to his consciousness that will give you a certain strength a courage a power to uh, you know uh, where intensity in your activity will increase yeah so thanks firstly for allowing us also to be some small part of the service uh, of course uh, bhaira baba has allowed us to be a part of it yes. uh, but you are also you know i mean finally it is the grace yes, there so yes, you know we cannot say anything else beyond that but we are grateful um you know there is also uh, you chanted also the 64 names of right. uh, or 64 forms mm. of uh, lord bhairav also in mm. one of the meditations so yes. i i hope people really feel that sense of attachment mm. to what we have created um i'm you know the question i am trying to understand why when you say that uh, and i'm not asking from a space of doubt mm. i'm asking from a space of curiosity mm. that when you say that bhairav baba has decided to wake up now mm. you know and i think what you mentioned uh, once is that a few centuries back he was very active mm. 
and now he's decided to get active again um i'm just curious why now like what what is is there something that see i can only speculate yeah so let me be clear it's not like i am bhairav baba's secretary and is telling me kya hone wala hai so he only knows why yeah. he is doing yeah. what yeah. but what i speculate when i meditate on this and i have thought of this very strongly because obviously somehow the other i am at the center of this phenomenon yeah. right i however much i may want to deny it i cannot because he has placed me in this situation so i reflect on this when i'm doing my sadhana mai sochta hu ki kya ho kya raha hai and then it struck me that there is perhaps an upsurge of sanatan dharma that is going to happen and it will take time but maybe 20 years 30 years 50 years maybe 100 years let's say we won't be alive by the time it fully uh, reemerges in a greater strength and power okay but somehow in that process it is important that bhairava Uh, the shakti of bhagwan bhairav has to come into this into into our uh, into our geography specifically okay in a very strong and powerful manner and um, one of the great uh, uh, one of the greatest influences that i ever had was i have spoken about him there was one tamil siddha purusha who had guided me through uh, through a friend but some the instructions that he had sent were perhaps the best i've ever received and i don't even i don't know how he looks i know his name but uh, let's leave that um, uh, he was very uh, careful of not mentioning anything to me he was um, I, i'm i'm damn sure i mean the kind of um, incidents that i know about him he was as if an incarnation of bhairava only okay so this all this happened about a year before coming to one year or two before coming to yeah see told me some things he was explaining and all that so he used to mention a very interesting thing that um, siddha purusha and i it makes so much sense to me he says that the india's primary problem kya hai desh mein so the state nation state of india that we have today was formed in 1947 i am not talking about bharat which is the ancient land of their continuous civilization uska baat nahi kar raha india the nation state that we have as a powerful uh, legal entity uh, uh, we all agree that we are um, we belong to the nation called india right yeah. so there is a law constitution whatever else is there etc it was formed at a particular muhurta so just like individuals a country also has a horoscope and a jyotishical chart based on the activities oh, it's all karmic eventually karma of a land means the karma of the people of this land okay what is the first thing that happened in 1947 a partition innumerable deaths both in eastern part of india and western part of india and all that and things like that etc so what is a partition so your borders are violated you have a certain border tumhara one third to nikal gaya who is the deity who actually guards the kshetra it is bhairav it is kala bhairav who protects just like he protects kashi he protects any kshetra he protects any shakti pitha any place of divine energy he is the one who guards who can enter so then he, he used to say that if a if a land has starts off with the violation of its territory obviously the guardian deity who is supposed to guard the territory of the land and one of its uh, is attributes is higher attributes to is everything his para bhairav means sab kuch wahi hai us us stage pe but one of his activities is also this the guarding the territory so you have not invoked him properly ya to sufficient amount of worship has not happened or he has his worship has been relegated to the back and other forms have been worshiped which is not there's nothing wrong in it but there's a proportionality that should happen and the consequences of that is this your sure, borders have already been violated and god knows future who knows anything can happen so i don't know in the future but somehow or the other i feel that uh, as bhairava japa increases uh, as uh, more and more people get connected and the environment becomes more charged with the mantra of even the nama mantra of bhairava it will produce and it will inspire many people see do not be under the f- impression that uh, uh, like i uh, you know uh, me or a few other people are only like this like this means they are only the ones who are sort of the great bhairav upasaka no you don't know how many of these people 51 lakhs japa jo kar rahe how many of them have what kind of potential It's even 1% of them reach the highest state with bhairava sadhana you can imagine what bomb blast they can create okay it is only he knows i don't know you don't know nobody knows only he knows that who among the people who are chanting who has what kind of capacity who has what type of karmas who will reach what state and through them what activities of dharma will happen in this land okay so it is like a huge coordinated chess that he is only playing okay the rest are all pawns everybody uh, now 
this bhairava japa as it increases it will also bring about a protective force for dharma for the people of this land he is as i keep saying bhairava baba is somebody who is very close to the physical plane so if his upasana goes on at a right pace there will definitely be activities changes or uh, things that will happen in the physical space definitely it will happen and in that context if ever uh, i hope so if there are the eight bhairava temples get created um, that was also an inspiration i received during uh, some practices so i have lot of questions on that okay. also um you know this but i want to take it yeah. a little bit you know there's two three points mm-hmm. i'll i'll come to the eight bhairava temples because it's very important and um but before we go into the eight you know the destinations i want to understand what the eight destinations are where they will be how it's in your head how the map is very clear i have all those questions yes. um but i just want to touch upon before that right. uh, you know you said that there is something if the if there is more mantra chanting the astral plane will get more charge and have an impact on the physical plane okay. i want to you know understand that a bit more like when you chant what is happening at the astral plane and how does that affect the physical plane every important thing that happens in the physical plane first happens in the astral plane okay good or bad okay it happens there and then it kind of it's like the reality happens in the subtle level and then it comes to the physical level okay how do we know that <coughs> you observe in your life only okay. say uh, i'm just saying suppose somebody uh, is little overweight okay and things that mujhe abhi i need to reduce weight तो पहला चीज क्या होता है माइंड में एक संकल्प आता है कि आई हैव टू रिड्यूस वेट सो अकॉर्डिंगली यू डिवाइज अच्छा आई विल डू एक्सरसाइज आई विल गो टू द जिम आई विल वॉक और वट एवर एल्स एट्सेट्रा एक्सेट्रा दैट इज द कमाइंड बट वेट डज इट स्टार्ट फ्रॉम योर माइंड डज द माइंड ए फिजिकल रियलिटी नो बट इट हैज अ वेरी स्ट्रॉग एस्ट्रल रियलिटी ऑल कमांड्स कम फ्रॉम द माइंड सो द सटल द रियलिटी द मोर पावरफुल इज इट्स इफेक्ट ऑन एवरीथिंग सो द डिवाइन द स्पिरिचुअल प्लेन इज द मोस्ट सटल बट वहां से अगर किसी चीज का कमांड आता है तो एवरी अदर प्लेन विल फॉलो इट नो बडी हैज द कैपेसिटी टू गो आउट ऑफ इट एंड द मोर स्थूला द मोर फिजिकलिटी इज देयर इन अ प्लेन द लेस अमाउंट ऑफ कैपेसिटी इट हैज ऑफ सेल्फ डिसाइडिंग समथिंग इट फॉलोस द इंस्ट्रक्शंस और आदेश और डायरेक्शन और इंस्पिरेशन आई डोंट नो द राइट टर्म द एनर्जी दैट कम्स फ्रॉम द सटल प्लेन्स दैट कमांड्स एंड गवर्न्स थिंग्स दैट हैपन इन द फिजिकल प्लेन हम्म दिस इज द स्ट्रक्चर ऑफ रियलिटी got it got it if you ever want to get out of uh, karmic cycles or you know destiny jisko hum log bolte hain so you have to lift yourself up to the highest subtle planes only those planes are free from uh, destiny baki is at this level everything is destiny just karmic reactions you are following so uh, i'm coming to the eight destinations yeah. but uh, you know the other thing that really struck me when you mentioned uh bhagwan bhairav bhairav baba you said that there is also you know a quality of the om bhairavaya namaha mantra which is a guru quality of the mantra um so can you explain a bit about that like why what do we mean by a guru quality inside a mantra that's very fascinating uh and you know what specifically about this mantra you know what does it do as a guru quality so how uh you know does it take you to your ishta or what if bhairav is your ishta so you know how does that play out so in my in my experience and opinion it is a fundamental nature of bhagwan bhairav to act as a guru he is remember is already the guru of the tantra shastras tantra marga he tells what is the method to do what mantra to do how to say it which deity how to worship the deity and everything it is his conversation with bhairavi which gives us the wisdom of the tantras so guru tatva is inherent in him already okay now when you are doing om bhairavaya nama this is a generic mantra of bhairava and it will help you connect to some or the other form of bhagwan bhairav so if you you know you need not actually search specifically which form of bhairava you keep your focus on kala bhairava or vatuka bhairava that is good enough because inside them they have all the capacities of all bhairavas both of them have it okay so they will accordingly give you the right inspiration result right direction in your life now the other thing when you Uh, when you meditate on the mantra when you do the mantra when you uh, uh, you know have reverence to bhairava eventually so he directs your spiritual path into the right space that you want to enter that is the best thing for you 
what is the path that will most suit you he knows it better than you do and he will take you there that is one of the chief qualities of a guru a genuine guru exactly knows ki what is your path okay where you will be best served where your spiritual potential will come out completely and fully has the capacity to develop itself that bhairava does and not only does it do it the interesting thing is that suppose you are you are supposed to worship say ganpati suppose i'm saying but even if you keep worshiping bhairava with faith a time will come he will create the circumstances so that you are taken to the your ishta devata specifically this happens when devi upasana is even more devi upasana lot of people worship devi that's one thing i am not talking about the generic worship of devi i am saying that you worship so that you reach the highest conditions of devi upasana for that it is impossible without the blessings of bhairava he not only prepares your mind and body he guides the path he opens the path he shows you what is the route actually how do you reach her otherwise you are just blindly doing something bl- blanket idea see <coughs> coming little back to our previous conversations when you start in the tantra mark sadhana or you worship a devata you have to first believe that the deity is a real entity being real as you and me are real that way it is not a cosmic principle there is some deity in some heaven god knows where i don't know where it is and everywhere it's possible it's very transcendental in nature if it's transcendental in nature you cannot worship the deity let's be very clear the gap is too high when you can believe in your egoistic mind that i'm worshiping it will produce no result because you have no uh, capacity the gap is too high okay in order that this becomes accessible to the human being average human being the deity out of his or her kindness also assumes a personality so once this person so bhairava is a personality of the divine durga is a personality of the divine so that personality has its likings dislikings accordingly we have the puja paddhatis jinko jo cheez pasand hai to shiva we give belpatra to vishnu we give tulsi because that that personality of the divine likes it okay so personality means they will always be liking disliking there are tithis ashtami tithi bhairav baba ke liye pasand hai because he likes that it's a personality will always have this so your accordingly you shape up your sadhana so when you are going in this path in the devata upasana the according to the personality he will react with you he will interact with you okay this is very important to understand in any sadhana so he uh, the beauty of his personality is that he also has a guru nature inside him uh, and if you have faith on him if you are devoted to him if you keep doing his japa if you especially and japa um, meditation and uh, the ashtami tithi vratas whatever little specifically you do so he likes the ashtamis so if you do something more on ashtamis he likes it even more that's the simple logic nothing complicated even with the om bhairavaya namaha if you keep doing it eventually eventually he will lead you to the right path the best development how it is going to come to you he only knows he will give you so that is why inherently there is a, a guru nature in him and more specifically if you meditate on him in a very white or crisp or, or a very shuddha um, uh, crystallized white format of ima- dharana if you do on him in your heart that guru nature of him gets accelerated faster so he, even in a personality when a deity is a personality it has innumerable capacities inside so it is not like a human personality he is still very complicated so he can be a guru he can be a shetrapal protector of a shetra he can be a, a transmitter of a tantra he himself can be a para bhairav at the same time so many things he can do like like say ganpati ganesha for example just to give an example he himself is maha ganpati he himself is the uh, deity who has to be worshiped for anybody who worship first is you do a ganpati puja standard puja and all that at the same time he becomes the maha ganpati also he can have so many roles inside multiple roles and they don't suffer from this like unlike human beings they don't suffer from ego ki maine main chhota ho gaya bada ho gaya nahi they will fulfill the function as per the dharma and that is the beauty one of the things about bhairav baba is that there is a guru element in him and the other thing that i feel is very useful in his upasana is that he is close to the earth so that is why it is slightly easier to access him he is resp- he will respond faster to your prayers relatively all else being constant if there are 10 people worshiping multiple deities and all that uh, statistically you will see that 6 to 7 of them will get a faster response from bhairav baba than other forms mm-hmm. 
So may I add one speculation to your speculation yeah. with your permission? Yes, please. Um, I think this guru quality mm. in this time mm. is actually needed with the degradation also of the Rishi lineage, somewhat being reduced. Right. And if we are, you know, all the statistics are talking about India, twenty seventy five being the second largest economy, very close to China. Right. Yeah. You know, it's not easy to sustain this kind of growth. Mm. So for that, we'll all have to be at our peak. Mm. Mm. And for that, we will need the guru quality, mm. which is not abundantly available right now. Mm. So therefore, Bhairo Baba is taking that mm. role. Uh, you know, this is one more speculation. And uh, I also feel like, you know, the other thing that, which is really striking to me about the conversation that you've had about Bhairo Baba's uh, guru quality. And uh, yeah, I think, not just the guru quality, but yeah, it's easy. It, the, this ease of access and then taking to the various Easter's also yeah. is a very uh, magnanimous role mm. that Bhaira Baba can, you know, kind of have mm. for all of us. So, uh, so it's it's wonderful. And uh, you know, these eight locations that mm. you have, have you identified all the eight locations? So basically, uh, some months ago, this uh, uh, strong inspiration came in my mind. Mm. There has to be at least eight. Eight is I'm looking at a minimum figure. Okay, eight Bhairava temples uh, with a specific configuration. So that configuration I have very clear in my mind. Okay. Okay. What, what is that configuration? No, I won't go like? into the details of it yet. Okay. 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 That is very clearly just kind of sort of for lack of better words, it got downloaded into the head. This is how it will look. Okay, inside. What are the specific pratishthas of deity will be there? There are multiple forms of Bhairava will be there inside, not just one Bhairava. Okay, what is the puja paddhati that will has to be that has to be followed? Couple of other things. Specificity. I have absolute clarity in what is going to be inside it. Okay, uh, the vigrahas has to be there, carved out specifically from people who can make such vigrahas in places with the right kind of stone, uh, right kind of iconographic details. It's very important. And the methodology of the worship, how how the paddhati of puja has to be done so that the energy of Bhairava comes in. Plus, there has to be also yantras of Bhairava placed inside it. Okay. So once, so I have inside, more or less I have an idea ki kya hone wala hai. And outside can be architecturally whatever it is. It, it's, I'm not too keen, focused on the outside architecture. It could even it take up the local architecture. For example, um, suppose uh, I was discussing with somebody if it's a temple in Bengal, it can take up, uh, the external architecture could be based on how temples in Bengal generally are. If it's somewhere in uh, Rajasthan, it can take up that type of external quality. That's fine. Internally, but it has to have certain degree of space and certain configuration of a formation of certain set of Bhairavas. Mm -hmm. you know, certain kind of deities, Bhairavas, plus they want to, there could be a Devi form also inside. Okay. So together, this becomes a very powerful center, very powerful uh, force and once that upasana starts happening in these temples the other thing is that uh, even at a very uh, normal level if you go to bhairava temples across india even the best bhairava temples they are actually very small hmm. they are just like uh, it's something like you know the other temples you will see so grand and wonderful and all that this is like a very small temple that has been made these temples should be grand enough so that they can sustain dharma for centuries to come that kind of space has to be there in the temple. That kind of structure has to be there in the temple. There have to be priests who will stay there and do the pujas thrice a day. The specific method of the worship and all that, that uh, I have in mind, I can that too will be explained to the priest, apart from the normal regular puja that he does, what needs to be done, etc. Uh, in order to activate that energy faster, uh, bring about. So these, uh, the other thing that I do is that, um, it should be in, uh, for example, one should be in Bengal, one should be towards Punjab, one should be towards the north as far as possible, one should be say Tamil Nadu, south. Okay, So like this, it should ideally be uh, as a protector, as places that uh, harness the energy very strongly and bring about uh, great upsurge both in dharma and protects dharma. So I don't know the exact eight locations at the moment fully. And I, I look at it even as a way that I feel, so it is not, again, like everything else, he wants it, he will get it done. So this is, there's a part of me that is 
in surrenderance to what he wants. Okay, it's not about what I want. So he will, the land will come of its own, the exact location will come of its own, the money will come of its own. He will arrange for everything. Okay, and it will happen. And if it happens, for centuries it is going to uphold dharma very strongly. First thing that is going to happen because of it is this. The second thing that can happen, that will happen because of this. <coughs> there will be an upsurge in shakta dharma. Shakti upasana will increase at a tremendous rate. Because Bhairava loves Shakti Upasana. He loves, absolutely loves Shakti Upasana. Right now in India, uh, the Shakti Pujas that happen, I mean, living 5-10% side, uh, the, so say Navratris or Madurga is very popular across India. So these, the, the Pujas, Shakti Pujas that happen right now are, um, are wonderful, but uh, if I may put it that way, the, uh, the attitude and the ethos in which it happens is not Shakta at all. It is, let's say, Vaishnava or things like that. Hmm. You are worshipping the deity, but you are worshipping in the attitude and the mode which is not primarily Shakta. So what do I mean by primarily Shakta? It has to be derived from the Shakta Tantras, Shakta Agamas. Tantras, to if you did half the people will get heart attack only. Hmm. Because they have hardly read those Tantras. They don't even know. They get shocked when they when they are told that this is the methodology that Tantras recommend for Devi Upasana. Okay. It is her, the whole tantras are her field. It is her path. She loves the tantras. Absolutely, absolutely loves the tantras. And that is why the places where tantra sadhana has happened maximum in India, these, those are the places you will find that the greatest of shakta saints have come. Vaishnava saints are another, could be anywhere else. Other saints are other places. But shakta saints who are worshippers of shakti and who are great souls, powerful souls, they have come from those lands which are famous for Tantri Kubasana of Devi. Those, Bengal has produced so many Shakta sins. It's Tantri Kubasana that happens there. We offer, we go, as I was saying, you go to Tarapit, you'll see the Tantric mode of, Kamakya Tantric mode of worship, etc. So these are the places where she loves this mode of worship. Let's, the Shastras are very clear about it. Everybody loves whatever they love. Like Shiva loves one type of worship, Vishnu loves one type, she loves this type of worship. So what I feel, in a long enough scale, as Bhairava Upasana increases, it will also eventually, organically again. It's not that you have to go and tell 10 people, Ki tum ki ye karo. organically, it will change the consciousness. Once it changes the consciousness, more and more people will do Shakta Upasana in the manner in which the Shakta Tantras and the others uh, uh, ask people to do. And I feel going ahead, going ahead means I'm not even saying these things that I'm talking about is not even 5-10 years. I don't know when. We may or may not be alive also at that time. Uh, there is going to be an upsurge of Tantra Sadhana across India. It is Shiva who says that in Kali Yuga, Tantra is the primary mode of worship that will happen. His words are never going to fail. We are only in traditional terms, we are only in 5,000, traditionally speaking, we are only in 5,000 years of Kali Yuga. There are like thousands of years left. Already in 5,000 years, a major portion of the Sadhana, say, say uh, Navratri is so popular across India, right? Whether it's Durga Puja in Bengal, yeah, Delhi, you go Navratri, yeah, Western India, you go Navratri, even South may be Aachkal hota hai, Navratri. <coughs> so these Navratri pujas, they are not Vedika pujas actually. It doesn't come from the Vedas. It comes from the Puranas, Shakta Puranas, Tantras and all that. They mention the method of puja. So basically you are not aware, but Tantras already entered into everything that you are doing. You might be thinking, you know, because you are conditioned to believe, so you are thinking that I am doing in this paddhati and that paddhati, but there is a, uh, there is already the force of Tantra that is activated and it will only increase with time. Hmm. And these Bhairava temples will also cause an acceleration of that eventually. So all in all I see, if Bhairava wills it, this is going to be extremely good for the whole country, for people, for the future. I also want to take the opportunity when we are on this podcast to uh, take, you know, I've mentioned this to you offline, but I also want to give this as a message to my friend uh, Jayesh Bhai Haryani. He's involved with the PMO's office on the redevelopment plan of Kedarnath and Badrinath. So if he has some opportunity to be involved in this, I just want to take this occasion to invoke that perhaps uh, if he sees fit, because this is a grand vision that, uh, you know, that we are here talking about and uh, I, I hope that in our lifetimes we see it accelerating if not fully 
fructified yeah. but it's uh, i mean irrespective we continue our sadhana and we yes. continue to do what we have to do that doesn't change anything correct. this is something that will manifest correct absolutely absolutely so that is why i say that we do our sadhana we do our activity hmm. we do it to the best of abilities and because baba will say so some things will happen that way hmm. Hmm. now uh, you know you have also spoken about uh, batuk bhairav yes and i realize we didn't get a chance to touch upon batuk bhairav so far in our hmm. conversation uh, so you know you have spoken a lot about kal bhairav and you spoken about the eight uh, hmm. kind of eight forms hmm. and then the 64 forms and you mentioned when you were talking about that there's kal bhairav and there's batuk bhairav hmm. so uh you know tell us something about batuk bhairav the origin of batuk bhairav uh, so there is a uh, there is a story that is believed that there used to be a demon asura by the name of apad mm. apad means uh, someone who causes obstructions and difficulties lot of obstructions difficulties continuously mm. causing and as usual was undefeatable mm. then eventually a small child manifested about 8 9 years old mm. around roughly mm. old who defeated this demon and he was named by the goddess apad uddharaka uddharan karna means to to save you from the trouble okay so this <coughs> was then blessed this child was blessed by all the gods and everything and in another story they believe that when makali uh, was in in a rampage mode in battle okay so when she goes into full force then it's unstoppable nobody can stop her she is that kind of a power uh, then uh, this child manifested and looking at the child her motherliness was evoked and she calmed down that's one story that comes this child then it was revealed is actually none other than he was named as vatuka bhairava vatuka mahabhairava okay vatuka means a small child vatuka mahabhairava and slowly when we see the actual the, the larger crop of mantras and all that we see that vatuka is none other than lord shiva okay he manifested as vatuka bhairava in order to remove the obstacles now another reason is when you are doing various sadhanas of deities <coughs> so there are going to be different obstacles that comes this and that hundreds of other entities and beings that can cause you obstruction etc etc so if you worship vatuka he takes care of all of these things he ensures that nothing can obstruct your disturb your sadhana and sadhana means uh, not the sadhana your life and things like that etc so vatuka is a small child who has within him all the powers of lord shiva in his heart his his non different from rudra he has lord shiva has five great powers okay all these five powers are inside vatuka uh, he also has the powers of all the other ashtabhairavas inside him he has blessings of mahavidya inside him he has the powers of mahalakshmi mahasaraswati mahakali all of it inside him he is lord bhairava is fast vatuka bhairava is even faster so this is the beauty of vatuka bhairava and i have seen in my own life in the last 10 15 years the upasana of vatuka bhairava has organically increased in lot of people across india one of the beauty another beauty of vatuka bhairava is that you can worship him easily at home so absolutely no problem because vatuka is a child form okay so worshiping him at home is perfectly all right doing his mantra japa is perfectly all right number 2 even in sri vidya and other sampradayas certain sri vidya sampradayas specifically without the blessing of vatuka bhairava you cannot enter deeper into when you may know the mantras and all that but actual experiential entering experiential anubhutis will not start the actual knowledge will not get transmitted the wisdom will not enter into your being until you are first uh, shown the path by vatuka bhairava so vatuka is a small child vatuka has every power of shiva every power of bhairava inside him and he is his primary quality is apaduddharaka apaduddharaka means he protects from difficulties apad word means any kind of difficulties whatever difficulty it is happening he will try to quickly save you from that difficulty based on your larger karmic conditioning okay so that is why vatuk bhairava upasana is very good for just about everybody anybody can do vatuk bhairava upasana and he has all the abilities all the powers inside so when you are doing the vatuk bhairava upasana what mantra are you chanting there are many mantras of vatuk bhairava the simplest mantra is that like om bhairava namo vatuk bhairava namo simplest mantra 
there are other there is one 21 akshari mantra which is very famous about to come over lot of people are aware it comes from the tantras but even this is also good om vatu ko bhairava nama so it helps you connect to the energy of vatu ko bhairava and uh, uh, it helps you progress faster and once you get connected more connected to vatuka you will see this he works very fast he is like even faster than general bhairav bhagwan is fast vatuka is even faster hmm. and um, you know this so now my my question is actually coming from you said vatuka bhairav is a form of lord shiva it's like internally he is like shiva only okay it is shiva who takes the form of vatuka bhairava okay. and this becomes more clear as we go deeper into the mantra shastra vatuka bhairava hmm 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 um now we've touched a lot upon so i want to actually close up yeah. with a subject which we touched upon but we didn't fully mm. go into mm. at the start mm. um you know we we spoke about kashi right and we spoke about the physical significance of kashi mm. um in the whole universe of shiva mm. in the whole universe of uh, bhairav vatuka bhairav mm. um let's talk about the physical plane of kashi you know why is kashi so revered and loved and you know you you spoke about the you know mm. the fact that dualities mm. can exist mm. very nicely mm. but i'd love for you to talk a bit about kashi. that yeah kashi is the most beautiful places uh, by itself it is very beautiful if you just go there on the ghats it's absolutely enjoyable there is a there is a soft uh, detached energy in the subconscious if you are if you are key, if you are careful about it you will find that there and that's why people who have an artistic bent of mind you find them in kashi musicians in kashi any type of uh, there is a certain relaxed state that comes in kashi and this relaxed state people may think it is because of the environment because of this that all that is there but it's also because of the blessings of shiva shiva resides in kashi <coughs> kashi is also believed to be standing on the trishula okay on the tip of the trishula there is kashi so trishula is a weapon divine weapon that balances all the three energies whether it's raja satta tama or whether uh, you know uh, uh, so there are three deities on the trishula actually so on top of that there is kashi the other thing is kashi's another significance is that uh, the river the ganges flows next to the kashi but it has the it gives the impression of as if it is flowing towards the northern direction so whenever the river is uh, uttarvahini nadi we call it, it river appears to be northern though it is actually it's coming from the himalayas the ganges will obviously flow down lekin close to kashi it gives the impression that as if because of uh, uh, because of the flow that it is as if appearing towards the north going towards the north that creates a it's like a a specific mystical current that creates which is very conducive for spiritual practice very conducive for artistic practice which is absorbing of all types of spiritual energies it is not fixed that only this is there in kashi as i say vedas is there and aghora is there two extremes two extremes are simultaneously existing in kashi other places it does not either ye rahega to wo nahi rehta hai this type of things are like very different contrary energies but kashi has this grand vast canvas of a superbly detached and beautiful energy laid back energy of shiva that is there that can harmonize all of this in the right proportion in the right places so eventually it gives a canvas that is absolutely beautiful and slowly slowly as one does upasana in kashi you can do so many sadhana in kashi that's one of the cities i try to go at least once a year now in january i had been to kashi and had a, thanks to uh ye um, i had a fantastic uh, abhishek darshan of bhagwan bhairav beautiful it was uh, so kashi is so many sadhanas you can do in kashi and it will it is a kshetra so powerful so ancient that it will evoke your uh, energies it will sadhana will become more powerful very quickly and the other beauty of kashi because i told you it's a broad canvas so you can do any deity worship in kashi don't be fix that only shiva worship can be done no you can worship ganpati in kashi terrific results will come you can worship devi in kashi you can worship lord vishnu in kashi 
all of these are there in Kashi. Everything is there in Kashi. So there is no being anywhere in the world or the universe which is not there in Kashi in some form or some proportion. And that is why Kashi was so revered in our consciousness and culture. It, it is like a divine place outside of the Himalayas. Its capacity to absorb every spiritual current and take it higher. That makes Kashi terrific, wonderful. I mean, uh, the more I speak of Kashi, it's still not enough. The two places I dearly love, there are many wonderful places across India, but two places I make it a point to visit regularly, one is Kashi and the other is Kamakya. Kamakya is different, it's very intense. It's singularly pointed Devi Shetra. But Kashi, and the beauty of Vishwanath is that uh, I've seen so many people, when I, I sometimes I used to go to Kashi, I used to see people who are not particularly spiritual, but for months they're staying in Kashi. So if you ask them just like that, they like the laid back uh, kind of, of that vibe that you get there. But this vibe is actually nothing but this is the aura of Lord Shiva. So he makes you calm down and then you become a little relaxed and then uh, things that are sort of bothering you too much doesn't bother you too much. Now you can use that positively in sadhana and you can progress faster or you can just lie down in the ghats and enjoy the scenery. So like that. So we've come to the end of this one, yeah. but we've started the threads of a few <laughs> other ones. So I hope we get the opportunity again. Yeah. And nice uh, speaking to you. Thank you so much for, I think we've gone through so many, yeah. it's been a leela, this one, of many, many uh, celebrations of Bhagwan Bhairav and histories and forms. Right. Thank you so much for sharing. Thank you so much. <laughs>